Hi, this is Brian Smith. Today is uh, video number seven in my daily Linux video series. Today is Monday, March 2nd. Today we're going to talk all about visual host keys in SSH. Before we get too far into the visual part, let's talk about just host keys and why they're so important. Most people are familiar when you connect to an SSH server for the first time, you'll come up with a message saying that the host key cannot be verified and it'll show you this big long, you know, fingerprint for the host key. And you have to either accept the host key or, or not. If you accept it, it'll allow you to connect and then it'll uh, cache this um, host key in your known host file so that you don't have to be prompted for this um, next time you connect unless the key changes on the remote host. Now, the reason why it's so critical, this first step when you first connect to a server, is because if, basically, in this diagram here, let's say that you're on the SSH client here and you're connecting, you're trying to get to this server. If it's the first time you've connected though, if there's someone who um, has access on your network, they can do what's called a man in the middle attack. And what they do is they basically, this server here is in between the client and the server you're trying to get to, and it pretends to be this server, and it basically passes everything through, right? So you, can, you, you think you're connecting to the real server, you actually ended up connecting to this, but basically as it gets the connection, it basically forwards it to the real server, and it acts as a man in the middle, so it's able to see all your passwords that you're typing in, any data you're transferring, basically anything that's going on, the man in the middle can see. And that's why you need to verify your host key. Now, the proper way to do this is the first time you connect to a server, um, you talk to the system administrator, and you have them uh, over a different channel, like a telephone or something like that, you have them tell you what the, uh, the host key is, when you connect in and you're prompted, um, you, you uh, check what you're, what's shown on the screen here to what the host key you were giving over the, over the phone or a different method was, and if they match, you say yes. And then you can be um, assured that you're connecting to the real server. And what's cool about SSH is that on any further connections, since you have that known host file, it caches this, and it'll through the uh, cryptography, it'll verify that you're talking to the real server. So once you have the key, cache in your known host file, you can be assured there's no man in the middle of attack um, as long as you verify this on the first connection. So that's kind of some background on why host keys are so important. It's, it's all about preventing this man in the middle of attack. Now, in OpenSSH, they, a few years ago, they uh, came up with this thing called a visual host key. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And so basically, this big long host key here is not easy for a person to remember. You know, if you if you saw this every day um, when you logged in, you wouldn't remember it after. You know, even if you, if you logged in the same server for a year, you wouldn't remember this. But um, what they decided to do was come up with an algorithm that converts the uh, the, the the host key into a visual representation, and you'll see something like this. Um, it's, it's an ASCII um, character pattern, and something like this is much easier for a human to remember than this. So the theory is, if you enable this feature, every day when you connect to a server, it'll show you this, you know, every time you connect, it'll show you this um, visual host key. And the theory is, you can remember this a lot easier than you can remember this. And then if you ever needed to, like, say, go onto a different um, client, SSH client, and connect to the server where you didn't have the, uh, the known host file populated, you'd be prompted to verify. And if you did enable the visual feature, you would see the graphical representation of the key and you'd be more likely to remember, yeah, this is what it looked like rather than, yeah, this was the right key just based on, on your memory. So that's the basic um, theory behind the uh, visual host keys. It's just easier for a human to get familiar with this and remember this than this big long key. And if you enable the feature, like I said, every connection you make to an SSH server, it will show you this every time you log in so you can start, you know, memorizing what it looks like. Just basically without even really thinking about it, you know, people are just visual in nature so they, you know, will naturally remember something they see every day if it's a visual picture like this. So it's kind of a cool technology. Um, if you want to enable it, what you do, 
if you want to enable it for all users, and this would be over on your SSH client here, is you would um, edit your etsy ssh ssh underscore config file and you'd add the option visual host key yes. Um, if you want to enable on a per user basis, if you don't have like root access on the server, you just want to enable it for your personal user, you can in your home directory go to the dot ssh directory, create a file called config if it's not already there, and add the option visual host key equals uh, or visual host key yes as well and that'll enable it just for that one specific user. So I hope you found this video uh, helpful and hope you learned something new about how visual host keys work. If you have any questions um, please post them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another new video. Thanks and I hope you guys have a, a great day today.